I'll share a little bit about my own personal life. Born and raised in New York City. Uh, went to, uh, my mom was involved with organized crime. I didn't realize it was organized crime until many years later as a police officer, I began to investigate organized crime. And then I looked back, I was like, wow, that's what mommy used to do. And, um, and then I was a victim of child abuse at her hands. Didn't realize it was child abuse at the time. And then I began to investigate child abuse and I was like, wow, that's what mommy used to do. And I saw this girl at a Young Life camp, that ministry I worked with, and she had a t-shirt on it that said, save your drama for your mama. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Bill's mama was his drama. <laughs> and, uh, and I had a cousin who lived in our house and, and she was a very wild girl. She was very promiscuous. And uh, if you have to ask what promiscuous means, you don't need to know, okay? Uh, <laughs> But I saw a lot of stuff that little boys shouldn't see. And when I was 13 years old, my mom dies of a massive heart attack. And the day that she dies, I find out that she's not really my mom. But the girl who I've been watching sleep around was my real mother. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Dang. You know, what do you do with that? What do you do with that when you don't know Jesus? What do you do with that when you don't know the God of the universe loves you and cares for you and wants to really uh, intervene in the affairs of your life? I didn't know that Jesus did, and my life spiraled out of control. Went to an all-boys high school. 7,000 boys went to my high school. I played football there. I was a real good athlete. But as soon as football season ended my senior year, I quit school, began running the streets and hanging out with a gang that was kind of crazy and doing bank robberies and murder. And I joined the military to keep them going to jail. Got married when I was in the service and uh, finished high school when I was in the service. And I got out and became a police officer. And they gave me a gun. They gave me a badge. I had tremendous authority. And, and, but I had no power in my life. And as a result of not having power in my life, I abused the authority that was given to me. And then uh, one day I got real. December 26, 1980 at 2.45 in the afternoon, I was watching TV and a man on television asked two questions. And he pointed at the screen and it was almost like he was in my house. He said, are you a sinner? I said, yeah. He said, do you know Jesus? I said, no. Say neighbor. neighbor. You know, you got issues if you get an attitude with the television. <laughs> And he said, call this number. And that day I called the number and a man explained to me the incredible love of Jesus Christ. He didn't tell me anything I hadn't heard before. But the Bible says no one can come unless the Spirit of God draws them. And that day God turned the light on and I prayed with that man and I received Christ in my life. And by this time I was an alcoholic, I was strung out on drugs, I was angry, I was violent, I was abusive. And instantly I was filled with God's Spirit and filled with this peace that I had never had before and a joy that I had never had before. My first wife, Claudia, came home from shopping. I met her at the door. I said, Claudia, this is new me. Jesus came into my life. I'm born again by the Spirit of God. My name's written in the last book of life. I'm a new creation in Christ. Because that's all the stuff that man told me on the phone. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor. neighbor. Never say stupid stuff to a black woman. <laughs> and uh, when, I, when I said that to her, she went, yeah, right. But God had changed my life, and then he changed her life, and then he changed the lives of my son and my father at 83 years old, and God turned our entire household around. And then we began. We began this new creation relationship with Jesus.